Well, the dictionary project actually started uh, five, actually maybe six years ago. So uh, in the midst of these six years, uh, I, I think I spent most of the time sort of researching on the individual sort of subjects or motifs that I was interested in. For the first four years of the dictionary, uh, it, it was research, but also the search for a form, for a suitable form that can encompass this, uh, the field of what I was interested in, you know. So, um, with the current format of the dictionary, I think, you know, the interesting thing for me is that the dictionary is not really a form to me at the moment, but rather it is this uh, sort of collection of like possibilities or potential. So, uh, because we are working at the level of programming and coding, what interests me is that there is great flexibility in how this project can be transformed uh, with each specific exhibition of the work. So at this moment now, I treat the dictionary as this kind of um, endless uh, experimentation, um, just pushing how far we can reconfigure the installation, how far I can push the possibilities of working at this level of uh, coding, um, not just possibilities in presentation, but also possibilities in process of how I can work with other people. Both the nameless and the name were or originally came out of terms from the dictionary. So for example, uh, the nameless is about a character known as uh, Lytic, I mean a real historical character who was the basically the Secretary General of the Malayan Communist Party from 1939 to 1947 and who also turned out to be a triple agent. So actually in the dictionary under the letter L, we have L for Lytic, but L also stands for legibility. So um, for me, uh, Lytic, uh, the character of Lytic is an illegible, meaning unreadable, um, personality. So, you know, that he is uh, one of the terms in the di dictionary. And uh, the other work that I'm showing here, which is the name. The name is um, about the name Jin Z. Hanrahan. And uh, Jin Z. Hanrahan uh, is basically the name of the author that wrote um, the first uh, authoritative accounts of the Malayan uh, Communist Party, of the early years of the Malayan Communist Party. And he published the book at a time when um, a lot of the information required to write the book is uh, restricted or, uh, by the British uh, sort of colonial and, uh, government. So he uh, got hold of information that no one else could. Uh, but after some sort of further digging around, one finds that Jin Zi Hanrahan uh, most probably, I would say with, uh, quite, with quite a bit of confidence that he isn't a real person, but is a, either a pseudonym or probably a name used by an organisation. You know, and uh, under this name is published books of uh, great variety from the Mexican Revolution to guerrilla warfare tactics. Uh, so under G in the dictionary, we have G for Jin Zi Hanrahan, but also G for ghost writer. So the, the link between Jin Zi Hanrahan and ghost writing or ghost writer, it's uh, quite obvious. But we also have G for ghost. Uh, ghost because one of the great cliches of uh, Southeast, thinking about Southeast Asia is that uh, we are supposedly a region that, um, you know, sort of believes in ghosts, uh, maybe much more than other places. If you look at some exhibitions done about uh, Southeast Asia, for example, the notion of ghosts and the spectral often uh, comes up. But I would like to think about ghosts uh, ghost in a different form. Um, I like to think about ghosts uh, in a sense of uh, how it was used uh, to describe how ghosts were related in some sense to communism, to Marxism. 
uh, because as we know, sort of the opening lines of the communi Communist uh, Manifesto was, uh, I'm probably uh, paraphrasing a little bit here, but a spectral, a spectre stands over the whole of Europe, you know. So right at the beginning of um, the Communist uh, Manifesto, we have this notion of uh, communism as being related to, to the spectral. Uh, I mean, Jacques Derrida wrote uh, very beautifully on, on, on these ideas in the Spectres of Marx. And uh, with it, in Southeast Asia itself, I think the spectrality of uh, Marxism or communism takes on an interesting kind of resonance because in most places in Southeast Asia, uh, communism also became this uh, a, a topic that is, became a kind of a taboo subject in the last uh, decades. Um, so like in Singapore, com communism, for example, is, is still uh, the history of our communism or the history of the left has still not really sort of emerged. Uh, it's still not something discussed in public. There are still government sort of restrictions and censorships by various uh, ministerial um, organizations on any kind of discussions related to, to Marxism. So this repression actually spectralizes it, makes Marxism much more, or rather communism, much more of a ghost. You know, this repression creates this ghostliness. So these are kind of the ideas linked uh, under uh, G. But I chose to name this current version of the dictionary, vo um, you know, volume two, G for ghost writer. Uh, because I'm also now expanding the notion of ghost writing to that of the algorithms, the algorithms that are piecing together the, f the, the two channel video installation that we are watching live. So the algorithms become a live performer and sort of a, an author you know, who doesn't really uh, exist, or it's this set of uh, sort of ghostly protocols, maybe. So, uh, you know, so I guess uh, these three works are kind of linked uh, together by these kind of concepts and, and narratives.